Good evening everyone, this is Sinner Freaky. This uh, following video is a small tutorial explaining Depths of Corruption. There's too many people doing Depths of Corruption incorrectly and then they go to the Abyssal and the Abyssal is just way harder. And people are under trained and they're causing a lot of deaths and a lot of revival scrolls and a lot of potions and it's unnecessary. So the first thing you want to do, you get to this boss, right? Again, this is regular Depths of Corruption. The Abyssal uh, video is going to be coming uh, very soon after this. So stick around for that. So these are two videos playing side by side. Okay, This is two different runs where I show you what you need to do. The first thing you want to do is you want to target the Revenge Crystal. Right? You want to kill the Revenge Crystal. Why? Because if not, everything you do to the boss, when he gets a little red shield, he's going to return to you. And he's going to cause unnecessary death. So you want to make sure you destroy the revenge crystal. Right? So this is what we did with this group. Again, this is a pickup group. I usually do most of these videos with pickup groups. So you destroy revenge. And from there, you run to protection. Right? Which is the defense crystal. You want to break this one. That way, he takes a regular amount of damage. Okay? And he is not elongating this fight past a point that you don't want to be in, right? Because you don't want him to get um, raged. That's going to be... The, the, the amount of power that he gains when he rages is incredible. It's almost regular abyssal uh, strength. So here you go, you destroy this crystal, right? the protection crystal, the defense crystal, whatever you want to call it. Once you do that, the other two crystals, you could power through them. One of them gives them like a small region effect, and then the other one gives them attack, and that's manageable, right? You do not want to be getting revenge, and you, do want, you don't want to have this crazy amount of defense that he gains. Now, in Abyssal, arguably, you want to take out um, revenge and attack first that way you try to power through defense right that's strategy I'm still debating it that's why I'm still studying that uh, abyssal but as far as what I've what I've done in several groups I find the same crystals the best option right after you do this this is smooth sailing smooth this guy should not cause you any more problems as long as you take care of those two crystals first especially in regular um so this is what we did with this group in the following video which is a separate group you're gonna see that we targeted instead of uh, revenge first we did protection first and then we did um revenge so revenge first and defense after or vice versa that's still gonna be a good strategy those are the first two you want to do because the earlier you take out those crystals you know when you get into the third crystal and the fourth crystal they get harder and harder to kill so as you can see this guy went down three minutes and 34 seconds very easy the second clip is going to come up right here so just watch this one. I won't be talking through this one. Just just pay attention to what happens. Pay attention to <clears throat> how we did this, how we power to uh, the defense, and then we did revenge, and then after that we smooth the same thing. So just gonna watch through this and I'll start I'll come in when we're doing hyper setup.
All right, now Ivysela could seriously be one of the easiest monsters if you know what you're doing. Especially, I believe she was changed. She used to do some very crazy stuff and you would just leave her in the life for a long period of time. She used to do these crazy white spikes that would just do tremendous amounts of damage. I haven't seen her doing that since the update and the introduction of the Abyssal Nova. But basically what you want to do with her is you want to leave her outside of the light. Right? Make sure you get her to about 8 stacks and then you bring her inside the light. Then you take away those eight stacks of defense and you repeat, instant repeat. But what happened before is that if you leave her in her life for long periods of time, she will do this very powerful white big stick spikes that will come out from the ground. And if that will touch your melee, it's half of the health gone. So that's the reason why we were trained to do eight seconds, eight stacks. Light, eight stacks, light. That's the way we used to do it before the update. After the update, things changed. I don't know if it was because of the introduction to this way again, I'm not sure what the devs were thinking, but that's basically what happened. See, she spawns with flowers, you take out the flowers really fast so that they don't do this uh, colon situation. And this is a very self explanatory fight. You, all you have to do is just really beat on her. She, doesn't require any special techniques or anything like that. Like I said before, if you kept her in the life for too long, she was going to be doing these this very big spikes. Not these purple ones. Some white ones that will come out from the ground and they will really hurt. You see the ones that she did back there? Those are not the ones. There were these other big spikes that she would do. Not this ones. These deal like almost no damage in comparison to the ones from before. I wish I would have made a video of those, but I don't have anything recorded. I usually record a lot of my fights, just so that I can study them and see what I did wrong and what people did wrong. But yeah, this, uh, she was changed. She was definitely nerfed. She became way easier. Um, as you can see, this is a very simple fight. Um, I don't even know if there's anything to explain. Very different to the Abyssal. The Abyssal, they did a very big change on her for the Abyssal. And she's actually one of the tougher monsters to fight in the Abyssal because of that change that they did. But I'll tackle that when we get to that. When I do the following video that I plan to do. Uh, so this is ring number one, about to finish. Uh, ring number two is going to be another group again. Very self-explanatory, just watch that one. Uh, very easy run. I'll stay quiet through this one and then I'll, I'll come back for a uh, horse. Actually, no, scratch that. Look how here she does the little spikes and then she does a big set of spikes right there. You guys see those big spikes. You see those big spikes, how it dealt so much damage to that made. Because those, those are not the same type of spikes. If you leave her in the light for a very long time, she'll start spamming these ones. And these don't deal 300 damage. They deal 4,000 more damage. So watch out here. She's going to do the little spikes now next to the seat. She just did the little ones right there. 352. They don't deal that much damage. The other ones, however, if they touch you, those stationary ones, the ones that stay there, when you keep her in your life for too long, those deal tremendous amounts of damage. So I guess it wasn't changed, just one run didn't have it for some reason, and this one does happen. But there are huge inconveniences like So that's what happens. If you keep her in the life for too long, she just starts spamming these, right? And you don't want that. You want to make sure that you have the eight, bring her in the light, take those, take the defense buff away. And then um, bring her back out to the darkness. That way she doesn't start spamming these uh, spikes. Because if she gets surrounded by them, you're basically going to take out your melee from the fight. Either Berserkers or Crusaders are not going to get into it. In, in, in the circle with her and straight blows with her. Because she's just going to one touch of the spikes. And then if you move again, boom, you're going to die. It's going to kill you that quickly. But that's basically 
what happens with this big spike. But you want to make sure you do eight off, and then you bring in the light with eight, and then bring in the light. You want to keep doing that, especially if you have new group, a new guild, and you're trying to test out or take out uh, your, uh, your younger members to the dungeons. That's basically what you want. Fight her all the time with her like you did here. Yes, you deal more damage to her, quicker, but she is going to be unnecessarily harder, especially for your newer members that have lower gear scores. That are just getting access to Royza, and then all of a sudden they're going to be hitting hit for 7,000 damage from just crazy spikes that is unnecessary. You don't want to cause that extra headache because. You know, believe it or not, people don't want to die when they play a game. They don't have, they want to have fun. They don't want to be dying. So. Alright, so here we're coming up on Royza. Again, it's two clips of Royza. One's longer than the other. And here's the first one. This is the longer clip. Basically, I'm just going to whirlwind. Alright, here is the trick. You get a message saying she's putting something in your head. You want to make sure you target the wall with that, right? If you don't do that, you're just going to have to... It's going to be a lot harder to fight. And that's the issue that I was having with a lot of pickup groups, especially in this one. Because they come here untrained, right? They want to move the thing that she, she, she gives you a message saying she, you're being targeted. And then what you're doing is you're moving with that thing, and then when she targets, when she actually starts to hit you with the, with the move, you're nowhere near the, the cage, right? And then what happens is she's supposed to break her own cage. You could hit her as much as you want, but she's going to do a lot more damage with her own cage than you can. Even if you're a Crusader, Berserker, mage and you're doing your most powerful moves she's ultimately gonna break the cage better than you can so you want to make sure she does so by first agreeing with everybody where you're gonna move what which of the 360 degrees worth of cage you're gonna target so usually what i like to do i like to do this closest to her see like right here i walk right for it Start hitting it right there. You see, somebody did it right. See, they just put it in the right spot. Then I got it right there. See, and then right there, I just put it on. She gets me out of the cage, and I'm good to go. I could come in here and, and deal damage to her, and this would be smooth sailing, right? But if you don't do that, you start dancing around with that thing on your head, and then you don't target the specific tower you want to hit. Then you stay in there and that laser is a one hit, one hit kill. So if that thing touches you, you're done. So what you want to do is you either want to do the zero degrees in the 360 right next to her, right? And then, or you want to do the 180. So you do zero, 360, or you want to. That's what you want to hit with that. That way, it's your, big, your best chances for escaping. If you do 90 degrees or the 270, that's a bad idea. So, again, 0, 360, right? Or 180. That's where you want to target those laser beams. So, as soon as you get the message saying, uh, you know, this necrotic energy, whatever, is going to hit you, put it there, like right here, see? Well, actually, I think I kill it here. Yeah, she was already pretty good. Away and then rage, yeah, it's a done deal. Done deal. So this at the time was my fastest run. I think it was 14 minutes flat. Yep, 14 minutes flat. And now here comes the second run, which was my fastest run up to date. Because of how much better I did Rosa in this group. Again. Raging and have the Centurion's Command and doing tons of damage. I'm very happy with the Centurion's Command. And I also have a video of 
do some PvP with it. Stick around for that. Some back here so, um, go for the cage. Come on, this. Do the cage. Do the cage. Or not, of course. She just completely skipped through that phase. We did so much damage to her that she just completely skipped the first cage. That's good. No complaints for me. Jump. So here we go. I go zero 360. I have the thing on my head. I move out of the way, I let her hit her own tower, boom, 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 boom. And I think she puts it on me again. And I put in the crusader. Alright, I'm going out. See, she actually, you know, if that thing hits you, you can definitely one shot you. But I think already, I'm already using a strength weapon for this run. And that provides me with a lot of defense, so that's the reason probably why I didn't die. But yeah, also having to. Berserker is really sped up this run. Because they're both doing defense break. He's doing defense break with the Earth Berserker. And I'm using breaking where it's a turret to my activity. So, yeah. Mine's 49%, so I know mean, what I did to the I don't know what most of these are doing. Yeah, this is my little tutorial for Depths of Corruption. I hope you guys got something out of it. Uh, very self-explanatory and stick around for the abyssal intro uh, tutorial that I'm planning to do you guys take care have a good rest of your day